to eat it. Okay. Good evening, everybody. It's Dr. Michelle Bankson. I'm coming to you this evening with another author interview. I am so blessed to have several author friends. All right. Ginger, it says it's adding you. And it says it's connecting. Yay! Hi! <laughs> Persistence pays off. Oh, yes, it does. Good to see How you, friend. How are you? It's I'm so good. good to see you. I'm a little discombobulated with technology, I think. Oh, no. Technology is great when it works, right? Absolutely. <laughs> hey, Evangeline, how are you? A good buddy of mine I haven't seen in years is on. Hugs to oh, you. Awesome. Awesome. So Lisa C is joining us and Michelle's joining us. Peg is there. Hey, Mike and Clump. Watching. How are you, Mike Clump? I knew him when I was a kid. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> camp counselor. He was one of my camp counselors. Well, co-worker oh. kind of thing, but you know. How awesome. Yeah. So for everybody joining us, we're so happy to have you. This is my friend, Ginger Harrington, and she is the author of the book, Holy in the Moment. I'm sorry it's backwards. I have not yet figured out how to turn my screen around. <laughs> I know. So Ginger, tell everybody when we met. It's we, been a while. It has. I can't remember what year it was, but I want to say it was my first writer's conference at Blue Ridge Mountain Christian Writer's Conference in Asheville, North Carolina. And I yeah. want to say it was probably 2013 or 14. I think you're right. And it you was had my a book proposal for a hope. For I fail. did. Yes. We were sitting at the table as Kim Bangs was critiquing it in front of everybody. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, as as a writer, you learn to just let go of a lot That's of right. that kind of thing and just roll with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it was very educational. But that was our both of our first year at Blue Ridge. It was. I remember mm -hmm. going. I remember walking into that conference and feeling, you know, you've heard of imposter syndrome. I yes. felt like an imposter. I felt like a kid playing dress up. Like I want to be a writer, but I don't really belong here. And I know it. One of the things I love about Blue Ridge is that feeling didn't last 20 minutes. Um, yeah. Everyone there is so friendly and helpful and you really do make great friends there. Yeah. Case in point right here. Yeah, that's right. And everybody has been at that point at some time. So okay. everybody who's there understands it, right? Yes. But when it's your first time, it's easy to look around and think everybody else has it all together and I have no idea what I'm doing. Oh, I know. But since then, my book, Hope Prevails, was released. And then last October, the Hope Prevails Bible Study released. And now your book, baby, yes. has released. It is. And I just want to say another hi to Mike Klump. He's uh, saying he's checking in from China. And Mike, thanks Welcome. so much for um, your congrats on the book. That's awesome. Well, welcome. We're so glad to have you here. If you have not gone over to my blog at drmichellebankson.com, go visit there because Ginger was our guest blogger there today. And you're going to love what she had to say about living in simplicity. <laughs> Ginger, let's talk for a few minutes about how holy in the moment came to be. Sure. You know, it's a long time ago, people were saying, you should write a book. And I would laugh and say the last thing the world needs is a book by Ginger Harrington. And honestly, the thought of writing a book absolutely terrified me. And I finally got brave enough to tell one of my friends, Brenda Pace, when she said that to me, I said, well, if God gives me an idea, I'll at least try. And three weeks later, God handed over the idea. I jumped into a minivan with some friends, Larissa Traquere and Jenny Connors. And I said, God gave me an idea for a book. You guys want to help me write it? <laughs> and, and that's how I got started writing. And uh, wow. that book hasn't been published yet. But uh, God has a way of growing us into our calling. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, my story with anxiety and 
really getting to the point where I was ready to tackle that and seek some, some help and some answers um, from the Lord, that healing journey led to holy in the moment. And wow. I just never, ever equated um, the tension between holiness and fear. And, and there really is. And, and God has such a way of disarming our fears when we really seek him. And that's part of what that blog post was about mm -hmm. today is yes. to seek God first. So with that, what does living with a settled soul mean? Help our, help our viewers understand that. Well, if, if you have the kind of mind that flies in 15 directions at one time, and <laughs> so you're talking to me, <laughs> <laughs> yes, sister, and you are prone to worry about things and make mountains out of molehills and um, try to solve everyone else's problems. Hi, Gay. Got, good to see you. Um, then a lot of times your soul isn't settled because you're so busy finding solutions or trying to feel better or trying yeah. to get it all done. And oftentimes feeling like you're carrying um, more weight than you know that you should, but you can't quite yeah. figure out how to get it all going in the same direction. Yeah. And so that's, you know, that's a little bit of an unsettled soul. An unsettled soul, I think also is some, um, something that unsettles our souls is when we uh, really are relying on what other people are thinking about us um, yeah. to tell us that we're okay or to tell mm -hmm. us that we're on the right path rather than finding that validation and direction from the Lord. So finding that our center in the Lord and really coming to that place of relying on Christ as our source of life and the, the source through which we do everything that we do, that's what's really helped me um, settle internally. And it, I really did experience a settling inter internally. Um, I felt for years that I had kind of a white noise going on in my head just a little bit just oh, a like, little bit of like too much coffee you know what i'm saying yeah <laughs> yeah and no i don't know anything about what you're saying mm -mm. Yes. And, you know, <laughs> yes i do good and all of that and i'm grateful i've been very very blessed but somehow in in the midst of the military journey that uh, we're a military family and my husband did 24 years in the marine corps and about halfway through our, our career path i had an onset of graves disease which is a hormonal hyperthyroid condition onset at the same time that we moved and wow. it was very traumatic because i had no support system being brand new and in transit no doctors and my um, hormonal system was going haywire and I did not sleep for months. And so after that time, when I settled down and you know they got me feeling better, every time we moved, all of that would come back. And, sure. <laughs> sure, and being the, you know, military wives often do what we, we do, what we have to do and we function and we do great. But at the same time, we're not always very good about taking care of ourselves. And I think sometimes that mobility factor is part of that. You're never in some place long enough to find uh, yeah. that support system or that continuity of care to really unpack some of our baggage. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, that's part of settling your soul is really addressing some of the things that are causing your anxiety mm -hmm. and learning to see them differently and finding some practical and helpful strategies for addressing those because it is gonna you know things are gonna pop up that unsettle me you know i i know that addressing anxiety is not going to make it go away forever but it helps me to understand it better and have some practical strategies to be able to settle my soul so that worry does not play as strong a role in my life and seeking god first um, has so many applications we just touched on it in a blog post <laughs> Yeah. Oh, for sure. That was just, you know, a, a minute, you know, beginning to this whole topic. And, you know, the topics of depression and anxiety are really near and dear to my heart. My yep. first book, Hope Prevails, was about my own struggle, both 
as a doctor, but then doctor turned patient when I went through depression. And then literal, literally five minutes before our interview, I pushed send on the next book, which is Overcoming Worry, Fear, and Anxiety. Oh, I'm so and excited for you. I know. I'm so excited too. And I'm going to go sleep for three weeks, I think, after we get off this interview. But, <laughs> but <laughs> you know, depression is so rampant. By 2020, depression is going to be our greatest epidemic worldwide, more than cancer, more than diabetes, more than heart disease, more than AIDS, all put together. And so if any of you who are watching this have not experienced depression, I'm so grateful for you. But I guarantee you know somebody who has. Right. Because one in four people will struggle with depression at some point in their lifetime. Mm -hmm. But then when we look at anxiety, anxiety is really considered the common cold of mental illness, if you will. Because we <laughs> all experience worry, fear, anxiety, even if it's not like diagnosable as an anxiety disorder. How many times do we say, well... I don't know about such and such because I'm just afraid that, or I don't want to do thus and so because I'm worried that that's an yeah. indication that, we're, that we're dealing with worry, fear, and anxiety, right? Yes. Ginger, when did you first realize that, that either of these depression or anxiety was something that you were having to deal with head on? That first time that when I was diagnosed with Graves' disease was the mm -hmm. first real battle that I had. I had experienced some bits of anxiety, but um, that was really something. Um, prior to being diagnosed, when I had active Graves' disease, but I didn't know it, um, we had three small children and uh, a kindergartner, a preschooler, and a baby. And our schedule was crazy trying to um, get everything done and get ready to move. And um, our, ta our baby got sick. That's my dog. Um, she got <laughs> we sick. like fur babies too. <laughs> and had a surgery. And my son, you know, mm. things would happen to my kids that were not, um, not terrible things, but they were, you know, they were hard things and they were things that were going to be solvable and temporary, but my, I would just get so spooled up about it. I wouldn't be able to sleep for a week. And I thought, this is not normal. This is, who is this girl in my head? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so that was when I first experienced it. And then when we moved from North Carolina to California in 2000, that's when it was a full on onslaught. And, um, it, I would, I was so afraid of everything, but I didn't have a reason to be mm. afraid other than the fact yeah. that my body was haywire. And I'm, yeah. I was glad that I understood that. But um, at the same time, anxiety creates its own anxiety because then you become anxious about being anxious. <laughs> you do. You do. And if you don't address it, I always tell people that anxiety usually starts out over something small, but then if we don't address it, it grows and grows and takes on a life of its own. So it's yeah. not one of those things that we can just ignore. But you hit the nail on the head because you said, you know, I was trying to figure out who is that girl in my head and what's going on in my mind. And that's where the bulk of our battle really has to be. Absolutely. That's why scripture tells us to take every thought captive. And, you know, I tell this to people a lot, but we have between 50 and 70,000 thoughts a day. So when scripture tells us to take every thought captive, that's a lot of work. Yeah. That's a and lot of work. What? Part of, you know, um, the blog post that I wrote for, you, for your blog today about seeking God first, one of the things about seeking God first, sometimes we think about that as, you know, like, oh, open your Bible and seek God first. But if we begin our day seeking God and inviting Christ into our thoughts and giving him access and saying, you know, Holy Spirit, I invite you into my thoughts today. I want yes. to fellowship with you in all that I do and think and say today. I want to rely on you today. We, you know, um, that is one way of being able to bring those however many thousands of thoughts you just yeah. said <laughs> um, under the control of the Holy Spirit. And then when we got the big busters, you know, <laughs> that come up, we have to be really intentional about those. But part of seeking God first is just in inviting and just reminding yeah. ourselves every single day that we rely on the Lord for everything. If any of you are watching this and have dealt with depression or anxiety, just, you know, give us a thumbs up or a heart in the comment. Yeah. Let us know so that Ginger and I don't feel alone, right? That's right. Uh, 
because I know that, that others deal with it too. But sometimes when you're going through it, I don't know if this was your experience, Ginger, but for me, I felt like I was the only one who was going through it because I could look at other people and they would have the smiles plastered on their face, whether or not that was really what was going on in their heart. And they looked like they had it all together. And so that would just make the depression and the anxiety worse because I thought that there was something flawed about me. Right. So if y'all have dealt with that, give us a thumbs up or a heart and let us know. So yeah. <laughs> we're not alone. If you are just tuning in, we are talking with Ginger Harrington about her new book, Holy in the Moment. Ginger, what challenges do you face in seeking God before other things? Well, one of them is just a time, time crunch kind yeah. of thing. And, you know, it can be when you've got a lot going on, it can be so tempting just to jump into your day and just to start mm -hmm. that race car and race through just to get as much done as you can and do it as well as you can. Yeah. And it it takes it takes discipline um, to stop and give God time in the morning to pray, to read the scriptures, to be um, contemplative and to to really invite the Lord into what you're doing. Um, and sometimes, honestly, I'm not always able to do that. And um, God, you know, that, that's not a law for us, but it's wisdom for us. Yes. And I think yes. so oftentimes um, Christians kind of think of that early morning quiet time or, or early morning devotional reading time of the scriptures as as something you have to do to be a good Christian. And you can be a good Christian and, and not have that happening every day, but it's a wise thing. It's a blessed thing to do. Yes. And um, Don't you think it sets the tone? Don't you think it sets the tone for the day? It does. And that's how we start off. It does. And so oftentimes when I have so much on my plate that I don't think I can do it, and I'm in a season of that right now, and I'm just, you know, Lord, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you to get, help me to get everything done that I need to get done. And I'm going to ask you to show me what to do first and what to give my attention and just be in that entire process with me. That is seeking him first. Yes. That is relying yes. on him in the work. And um, I love to be able to spend that time with the Lord. And it does set my tone for the day. And it does give me things to think about and to pray about. But on those days when it doesn't, I still pray. And I still ask yeah. the Lord into it. And I'm still conversing with him as I'm doing my work. And I'm trying to be mindful of the presence of the Lord and relying on Christ. And he does enable me to get it done. And um, God's so faithful that way. And so right now I'm in a, you know, I've got um, with a ministry that I'm working with, Planting Roots, we're trying to get our first book ready. Um, I'm get, leaving town to go to Colorado Springs on Wednesday. Uh, I'm going to be speaking four times in a week. <laughs> And, uh, you know, trying to get all that material ready and all the rest of life. And it, you know, several times today, I've just had to stop in the moment and seek God first and say, Lord, I'm just going to trust you. Help me to get everything done. And whatever I don't get done, I'm going to trust you with that, too. And um, you're in all of this. And I want to enjoy each part of the process with you rather than worry about it or be anxious about not getting it all done. And um, he's doing that. And and I'm not sure what tomorrow is going to look like, but I'm going to trust him with that too. Mm -hmm. But that's so scriptural because that goes back to the verse in Matthew that says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and then all these things will be added unto you. So it really goes to having our priorities in line and looking to him first to set the tone, to set our path. You know, many are a man's plans, but it's the Lord who orders our steps when we will let him. You know, but I think, I think that's the key is we yes, have to be open and say, Lord, tell me what you want me to do today. Because as women, especially, well, this is true for men too, but I can only speak from a female's perspective. Our to-do list is longer than the day, right? So oh. we've got to leave it up to God. What's the most important thing? Yeah. It helped people who may not understand, who might not have read your book or might not have read your blog post on my um, blog today, but help us understand you say seeking God is a holy choice. What do you mean by that? I mean, is this like a, a religious 
practice. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, to be holy is to be set apart and dedicated to God. And it also, one of my favorite aspects of the word holy um, points to the old English definition, which talks about being whole. And so there is this concept of being healthy and whole related to God's holiness. And when his holiness is exhibited in us and we're relying on his holiness, then he is making us holy and whole. He's making us righteous. And um, so that's kind of the perspective that I'm coming from in the book, Holy in the Moment. It is um, really based around the verse that talks about now may God put us together, spirit, soul, and body, um, and keep us together, keep making us holy and whole. And um, that is just such a beautiful, beautiful way that Paul ends um, one of his letters. And that concept of the Lord putting us together, particularly having had some pretty significant battles with anxiety, I knew that I could not fix that. I tried as hard as I could. I memorized as many verses. I prayed as hard as I could. I had people praying for me. I changed my diet. I, you know, whatever I could try, I tried. And it, you know, because it had a spiritual root, God, our healer, is the only one who can unpack that yeah. spiritual root. And he does it in his timing. And um, so he really does make us holy and whole. And it's a process that lasts a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And being able to choose in the moment to trust God and to rely on the life of Christ within us makes that moment holy. It, it's a good choice. The best choice is to rely on Christ in the moment. And that's what that book is about. Just all the little areas of our lives that we um, can do that. So the sub today, if, if you're just tuning in, we're talking about Ginger's book, Holy in the Moment, but the subtitle is Simple Ways to Love God and Enjoy Your Life. We don't want to give too much away because we want you to get the book. It's a good book. But Ginger, can you just give us a taste? Like what's one simple way that maybe we haven't thought of that we can love God and enjoy our life? Because I think sometimes we get so busy doing things that we don't enjoy the journey. Mm -hmm. We're always looking to the destination and not enjoying the journey. So what's one simple way that we can love God and enjoy life? Well, one of the ways that um, has been really helpful for me is to be, to examine my thoughts and to think about what am I really believing in this moment? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just relating that to our discussion of anxiety when an anxious yeah. thought half comes across my mind and I think, okay, what, am, what is this really about? What am I really believing in the moment? And is this true? And just that little stop, that little check in my spirit mm -hmm. to be intentional with my thoughts and to notice, Hey, I've got an anxious thought here. This is coming from somewhere. What's this about Lord? And inviting him into that, being able to recognize, well, okay, I'm worried about this or that. And um, I know that God's got that. And I know that I can trust him. And it allows me to choose to not entertain that thought. Mm -hmm. um, if, the, if our mind is a door, we have control over what, what and who we That's allow. Right. And um, our, you know, our thoughts can come from so many places. They're not only generated from within our minds. You know, we hear people talking around us. We have an enemy who whispers thoughts to our minds to see, just to see if we will take the bait and right. open that door and let him come in. And so many times I, the enemy has put up a thought to my mind and it sounded like me and I let it in and I had a party, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, just let it, let that thought just go to town and it wasn't good for me. And so being able to just think about what I'm thinking about is one way of being holy in the moment, because yeah. then my thoughts become a partnership between the Lord and I. Yeah. And, yeah. and I realized that he's, he's as close as my thoughts and he's not sitting, you know, he's not, there's no condemnation in Christ, Romans 8, 1. And really being able to let go of God as the judge and the, the mean mm -hmm. teacher who's going to smack you on the wrist and 
take you down yeah. if you get even the littlest thing wrong. That is, that's one of those misperceptions of the enemy that he loves to feed to our minds because then we won't trust God. Yeah. And so all yeah. of those are, are just one simple way. It's not easy, but it is simple to think about what you're thinking about and just to ask is the, what's true in the moment is one way of finding holiness in the moment. Yeah. I, you know, I had an experience one that once that was very much along those lines. And I think it attests to the importance of paying attention yeah. to our thoughts. I, you know, I was working on a presentation. I had to go speak before a group of thousands of other counselors and ministers and pastors. And I was working on a slide presentation <laughs> and I don't tend to be very tech savvy. So, you know, just in all transparency here, that's not my gifting. So I was working on slides and a friend said that she would help me. And she said, I just, I just need to know what it is that, you know, that you want to convey and the purpose of these slides. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm just, yeah, I'm just so stupid. <laughs> and my then, I think he was like 10 or 11 at that time. My son was sitting there and, and he looked up and he says, only if you receive that mom. And I was like, oh, my word, you're right. Yeah. You know, the enemy had stuck that thought in there and I clung to it because I was frustrated in the situation. And had, had my son not said something, I would not have taken that thought captive. But because he brought it up, I could say, wait, you're right. I am not stupid. I am intelligent. I have the mind of Christ. Yes. He will help me work this out. I just need to take a pause and think through this situation. And that's one of the simple things that I do to love God and enjoy life when when things get overwhelming for me and when they they get really stressful and my thoughts are all scattered I will light a candle oh, I love and I will have that right next to me and there's something about that that just has a calming effect mm -hmm. and then I can then I can go to the Lord and go okay I don't know what's going on here but it's not working out well so like where do I need to course correct and there's just something about that candle being lit and lately with finishing up this um, manuscript. I, I've burnt through so many of my candles. I know. Those are like burning all the time, but I just, yes. it causes me to breathe deeper yes. and to sit straighter and to be able to just relax and enjoy the process, even though what I might be dealing with at the moment is frustrating or confusing or agitating. So anyway, we, Ginger and I would love to hear in the comments some of the ways that you all love God and just enjoy life in the midst of the chaos and the busy. And now that we have social media, that just ramps things up because there's the demand to be present there as well. Um, did this holy habit of, of seeking God first help you write your book or is that something that came through the process of writing the book? Oh no, I had to do that every single day of writing the book. It was a quick write. It was a, quick I remember book. that. I remember how fast it was. And I'm not a quick writer. Um, and well, see there again, I, in the, in the past, I have not always been a quick writer, but I'm learning to be a faster writer. Um, but well, and when we're in tune with him, it, he'll download it, right? And he makes me work for it, girl. <laughs> <laughs> it is work. It is work. Let there be no mistake. I was telling someone yesterday, I think people think that writing books is glamorous and easy. And it is, it it is, is neither of those work I have for me. ever done. <laughs> and, um, but I really did. I had to, because the pressure of that deadline, I yes. had to basically write a chapter a week. And I was, it, it, I was taking me, it was taking me two weeks to write a chapter and I could do the math going, Oh Lord. <laughs> and I recently, um, I, it's the blog post before though. I've got a teaser on my blog to the post that I wrote for you today, but the previous, the one, the one right before that, um, talked about having to really come to the Lord first every day and trust him in the moment for mm. every single word, for every single page yes. to finish on time. And one time, one of the things that I talk about in the blog post, um, that I wrote for you is, is that importance of spending time in God's word and letting him speak into the thing that we are anxious about. And he's so faithful to do that. So one night after dinner, I was just like, I am never going to sleep tonight. I am 
spooled up about this deadline. I could feel the weight of it almost physically on me. And so after, yes, after dinner, um, I cleaned off the kitchen table and I got my Bible out. I don't normally have my quiet time after dinner, but I was like, I cannot do anything else until I, you know, spend time with the Lord because I need him to settle my soul so that I can think straight so that I can have peace and so that I can continue to trust him. Because if I'm not trusting him, what's coming, what I'm going to write isn't going to be what yeah. he wants to say. And okay. I don't want that. I, I don't want to write a book just to write a book. Um, frankly, I got better things to do than that. <laughs> <You know>? Yeah, <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> it's way too hard just to write something to write a book. And um, so I sat down and then the Lord spoke so directly. I was worried about finishing on time. I was worried about whether or not it was going to be any good. I was worried about, you know, just so many things. And he took me to a passage where he's talking about seed for the sower, about how he gives seed for the sower. And I could just hear the Holy Spirit just whisper into my thoughts and words for the writer. (laughs) And so it was just this beautiful reminder and then he talked about that we're not going to be lacking any gift, um, that we're, all of our sufficiency is coming from him. And when yeah. I looked up the verses, because I like to look up the definitions, when I looked up the definitions for not lacking, it had to do with crossing a finish line on time and um, to finish with excellence. And so yeah. everything that I was worried about it, within that definition of the verses that he took me to, when I was sat down to read my Bible spoke specifically to every single one of my fears. And I was like, okay, God's got this. I'm good. He's got it done. You know, we're good. And that enabled me to settle in a way that enabled me to finish the book. Mm. And that was a real pivotal place for me internally. And so that seeking him first, rather than just, continuing to be anxious about it or um, letting that worry, like you talked about, letting it build up, you know, um, and becoming a a bigger thing internally, just taking that time and saying, okay, I, right now, this, this is a deal breaker. I'm going to sit down and hear from the Lord and I'm not getting up to, you know, until he gives me a verse that allows me to have that spiritual check in my spirit where I'm receiving from the Holy spirit, what he wants to give me in the moment. And um, he's so good about meeting our needs that way. And when we don't mm-hmm. seek him first, we miss that opportunity. Yeah. And I tell you yeah. what, the, the hardest times in my life, the Lord has spoken through his word, but he's not going to chase me down. He's right. not going to make me sit down. It's my choice to do that. And it's a holy choice. And when we experience the Holy Spirit settling our soul and speaking to the things that we're worried about through his word, then we, we thirst for that. You know, when Jesus says, um, come to the water and drink, if anyone's thirsty, let him come to me. You know, that's what he's talking about. It makes our souls long for the living God when we really perceive that he is with us in the fray and that he is providing for our needs through his word and through um, other avenues in our lives. And those are holy moments for sure. I love it. I love it. So we have been talking during this time about Ginger's book, Holy in the Moment. If you want to read her blog post, and I would encourage you to do it, go to drmichellebankson.com. Um, pick up Ginger's book. It, it, you know, Christmas is coming up. It makes a good gift for friends and relatives. Ginger, tell us where we can find you so that we can hear more about what you're doing and keep in touch with you. Sure. Well, I'm on Ginger Harrington, author on Facebook, my Facebook page. And then my website is gingerharrington.com. And if somebody wouldn't mind um, writing that in the comments, then people can see it, gingerharrington.com. The book is available on um, Amazon and Barnes and Noble and um, websites that sell books. And one of the things that's really exciting, the book has won a couple of um is getting some notice right now. It is a top 10 finalist in the Author Academy Awards for in the religion category. And that's very exciting. And if you guys want to vote for the book, you can click on the cover of the book on, um, it's under Author Award Finalists 2018. And um, it's on page 11 in the religion category. And you click on the cover of the book and that registers your votes. That's one 
component of of the competition. And, and what's the URL for that? Um, author awards finalist author awards dot com slash finalists. Okay. Okay. And uh, so I'll be going to Cincinnati and presenting the book at the award ceremony for that. And that's part of the judging, which I think is really cool that they're not just looking at the book and the cover and the writing, but how people, whether or not people are voting and also how you present the book. So yeah, I'm excited about that. And it just um, is also a finalist for military writers association award. And that is um a competition that is judged against you're not judged against the other books you're judged against their standards and so however many books qualify are finalists and 15 wow. percent of the books that are entered um, are finalists and then after their award ceremony you'll know what level you know it, um, it uh -huh. is but it's exciting to to see that the it book is got some notice and some acclaim and that's exciting because it opens the door for God to use the book and to get it out there for people to know about it more yeah 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 would you mind closing our time together in prayer I would love to Michelle it's been so fun to hang out with you and your crew and I've had a lot of um, folks that have popped on and guys I will get in the comments and say hello to you and I'm so thankful for everybody hopping in and for those that are reading thanks so much for reading love to yeah. have yeah. leave a review on Amazon that'll really help the book but yeah let me close in prayer um, and pray for you guys particularly those that are struggling with anxiety or depression so let's pray. Mm -hmm. Please. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for just the wonder of technology. To be able to have this conversation today, Lord, is such a gift. And Lord, we thank you for each person who is watching live, um, each person who is expressing needs and concerns in the comment thread. And we thank you for each person who's going to watch the replay. And how we pray that you would take these words and this conversation, Lord, and use it to encourage many. Lord, we know that dealing with worry and anxiety is a very hard thing. And I pray that you would remind each of us to seek you first from that first anxious thought, Lord, remind us to trust you, remind us to pray, remind us to invite you into the situation, remind us to help ask you to help us evaluate our thoughts, to think about what's true and what's real and to what we are relying on in the moment. Lord, for those that are, dealing with depression, I pray that you would lift their spirits. Father, we pray that you would lift the depression from them and enable them to experience your joy and peace in a real and practical way. Lord, we pray for your blessing on Michelle's book and just get it into the hands of everyone who needs that book. And, and we praise you that she's been able to finish her draft and, um, that's so exciting, Father, and we just pray that you would anoint this new book that's going to be coming out that um, Michelle has written, Lord, and pray that you would anoint it, Father, and just use it to minister to the hearts of so many who will read it, Father. And um, we just thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you that you love us so much, that you don't leave us alone when we struggle with things, and remind us to turn to you, to trust you first, to seek you first in all things. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, Ginger, this has been a delight. Yes. Thank you for spending part of your Monday evening with us. Oh, thank and you. And we will, um, we'll see you this week on the blog as um, people leave comments and just share with us what it meant to them. Fair. So, y'all, thank you so much for spending part of your Monday evening with us. We pray that you have a blessed evening. Until next time, it's Dr. Michelle Bankson. Have a great night, y'all. Bye.